Hello, it's Jang here with a look at the famous LEGO Emerald Knight. This came out in 2009 with 1,085 pieces and it included three minifigures. This is by far the most fancy, most complicated steam locomotive that LEGO has ever produced. Many people would say this is the nicest looking train set that LEGO has ever produced. And it's hard to argue with that. The overall look is not only obviously classic, but I think it's also very classy. And I think the color scheme is mostly responsible for that. I feel like the dark green really became attached to this set. If you think of brick based Lego sets that are in dark green or that have a lot of dark green, most likely the Emerald Knight is going to come up as one of your first choices, if not number one. These 20 2 by 4 by 2 thirds curved pieces are printed. The gold stripes are printed on the edges. Everything else you see on this set that has some sort of design on it is actually a sticker. I built this with the optional power function setup that you could bundle with the train, but by default it didn't have that. And honestly, the cab looked much better without the motor and instead having this firebox detail that you could close up. Without the wires, you could also fit the engineer there more easily. The battery box also looks out of place in the tender car since it's not covered up at all. But without the battery, they don't give you any pieces to represent coal in there, so it would just leave a big open empty space. There was also an option to install a power function's light on the front, but I haven't done that. Because the engine is so long relative to unrealistic, tightly curved LEGO track, they made the rear axle swivel back and forth freely, while the front is actually a bogey setup, and that not only swivels, but also shifts side to side. Additionally, there are only two real driven traction axles with a pair of false wheels in the center to allow the negotiation of the tighter radius. Here's how all that looks from underneath with again the swivel at the rear and the ability to just shift the front section around willy nilly. Here you also see a little bit of the bevel gear drive. The black gear is the input. The train only comes with one passenger car, but it is also very classy looking itself and has a nice level of detail. This has a very complementary color scheme rather than just going with the same colors as they did for the locomotive and tender. I especially appreciate the two full lines of dark brown. All four corners have brick built doors which can be opened up and most of the roof can be removed as one large assembly. Inside, there's seating for four along with a couple of tables and also a service cabinet down at the end. The spaces in between the seats and between the seat and the cabinet are to accommodate a briefcase or two. I feel like one of these minifigs is not like the other. The engineer on the left has a very old-timey look to him and just kind of feels like he's from a different era of Lego, not just historically speaking. The other two figures are fairly straightforward and just modern fare. Now one of these has a secondary face as well and it's not the engineer, it's the female, the passenger in the center, and I guess that's just the face that you would use if she missed the train. Put it all together and this is what you get. Quite beautiful but it really begs for a couple more cars. At its widest point, the locomotive is nine studs wide, so that is something that you have to watch out for when going around a pre-made layout. LEGO's own train stations, though, are able to accommodate that. Here's what it looks like at maximum speed on the lithium rechargeable battery pack. So that's the Emerald Knight then. Very, very nice looking train. It could be nicer looking, it could be more detailed and better finished, especially with the power function stuff installed, but do keep in mind that this is designed to be able to be built by children. This uses all legal LEGO connections and such, and it's very easy to follow the instructions. Also, when this was available, it was right around the normal 10 cent per piece price point. And that's even with the printed pieces and a bunch of Technic stuff. All things considered, I think they did a very good job here, and this set deserves all the praise it ever received. Let me know your thoughts about this set by leaving a comment down below. I appreciate your time in watching this video, and I hope that you'll come back for more, because more are on the way very soon. Catch you later!